What's going on guys? Welcome to this video and in this particular video we are going to start a series on Spring Security. Yes, you heard it right. Lot of you had reached out to me, commented on my videos and requested that I start a series on Spring Security and here we are. This is the first video and you can find the link to the entire playlist in the description below. So if you are new to this particular channel, I would encourage you all to hit subscribe button and like this particular video and also turn on the bell notification icons to watch more such amazing content from myself. So I keep creating free content and subscribing is what you can do the least to support creators like me. Okay, because your gesture would enable me and impact my ability to create and bring such amazing content on this particular platform. All right, so let's talk about this video, what we are going to do, and then we'll talk about this entire series. So in this particular video, we are going to cover the fundamentals of security. We are going to understand security, different aspects of security. And uh, in this entire series, we are going to begin with the basics of security. Then we'll talk about how spring security works. How can you get started with spring security? We'll cover different things like form based authentication, basic authentication, JWT. We'll understand how you can do in memory authentication and even database authentication. Okay, so that's what it's all going to be about. And I'm so excited to bring this particular video to you all and even this series. Okay, so it's going to be really exciting. Okay. So right now, if you're watching this video, I would encourage you all to leave a comment right now. Tell me who you are, what's your name, what do you do right now, and where are you logging in from? Okay, you can mention your city, state, your country, and also let me know what sort of videos should I bring in next. So let me tell you, I read all the comments personally, and uh, the list of videos that I'm going to bring onto my channel in future is highly influenced by the comments and requests that I get from my viewers. So your comment about requesting something would influence my next set of videos. Okay. So, so be sure to leave a comment and even like this video. Okay. So yeah, without a further ado, let's jump right in. Well, I know most of you want me to go hands on directly and uh, show some code, right? But to implement Spring Security into production grade applications, you need to understand some concepts that are important. And I'm going to talk about those concepts because once you understand these concepts, then you will be ready to implement Spring Security into any of your Spring Boot applications. So please bear with me for a while. I'm also excited to teach you in a hands-on way. This is a hands-on course, of course, but yes, some concepts we need to touch upon. And for that, we need to touch the slides. Okay. So first thing I want you to know that security is important. Of course, you understand this and that is why you are here watching this. Okay. Now what is security? So security is securing something. Okay. And you have a house, right? You have doors, windows, you lock your door if you're out, right? Spring security does something similar for your web application. It's like a sophisticated security system that you implement in your application. And that system ensures that only the right people can access certain parts of your application. And this helps you keep your data safe and sound. Okay. So in case of your home, why would you lock your door and windows when you're going out? Of course, so that no one can come in and access your personal things, right? Similar way, it works with your web application, okay? And Spring Security helps you with that, all right? Now, if I have to talk about the importance of security, number one important thing is privacy protection. So just like you won't want strangers speaking through your windows, your users don't want unauthorized people seeing their personal information as well, okay? So protecting user data prevents identity thefts and fraud. This is something that you need to understand. Trust. So if your house is known to be easily breakable, people will be wary of leaving their valuables with you, right? In a similar way, if an application is known to be insecure, 
users and client will not trust it with their data. Okay, so if you're building something, then having that credibility, having that trust is really important in the market. Integrity. Imagine someone sneaks into your house and replaces your important documents with the fake ones. Okay, so in the digital world, application security ensures that the data remains unchanged and trustworthy, preventing from unauthorized modification. Okay. Compliance. This is also important. So there are laws and regulations about building security in real world. Okay. And there are also legal requirements for data protection in digital world. So security helps ensure compliance with these laws, avoiding legal consequences. Okay. So this is the importance of security. Now let's talk about role of spring security within the spring ecosystem. So we have spring framework. It, it's like a foundation, like the structure of your house. Then you have Spring Boot, and it's a module that makes easy to set up and run Spring applications. It's kind of like having house built with all the utilities connected and ready to go, right? So there are a lot of features of Spring Boot, like auto configuration and all that make your life a lot easier, okay? Then you have Spring Data that help you manage data access, okay? And then you have Spring Security, okay? Now, Spring Security is a key player in the Spring ecosystem. It's a collection of tools and frameworks for building Java applications. And using Spring Security means that you're protecting your application's data, like you would protect assets in a company safe or anything personal, okay? So there are two important things that you need to understand when it comes to security and when also it comes to Spring Security. So number one is authentication. We will take a look at what authentication is, okay? And then we'll talk about authorization. So most of the people I speak to, they get confused about these two terms, okay? So I want some clarity around this first. And then when we head over to implementation, you will have a clear understanding as to what we are doing and why we are doing, okay? So talking about authentication and authorization, authentication, what is authentication? Authentication is proving who you are, okay? So if you are going into a restaurant or if you're going into a hotel, okay, you will have a security person or someone at the reception, whoever, who will ask you for your membership card or uh, how you're entering, any sort of authentication that authenticates that you're allowed to enter, okay? And showing that thing proves that you are a member and uh, that's the authentication that you do, right? In your computer, when you log in, you're entering your password, your username and password, or you, if you're using Mac or any other laptop which has a fingerprint scanner, you will scan your fingerprint, right? And it authenticates that it's you who are supposed to use the system and you are using the system. That's authentication. What is authorization? Authorization is about what you're allowed to do after you have proven who you are, right? So you have proven who you are. Now, if you enter a hotel, okay, you enter as a, as someone, right? You show the identity card and you are allowed to enter, you enter. But now you might not be allowed to enter every place of the hotel, right? You might be allowed to access certain rooms or certain facilities and there will be specific permissions that will be with you, okay? You cannot enter, for example, a security zone. You cannot enter a particular area or you cannot enter someone else's room. You are not authorized to go there, right? You're authorized to use your own room. So that is nothing but authorization, okay? And in a computer system, authorization decides what actions you can take after you have logged in, okay? So let me reiterate over here, okay? What is authentication? Authentication is like you are entering your username and password, okay? You enter your username and password, you get access to the system, okay? What is authorization? With authorization, okay, so if you are having an application, you're going to have roles, right? So user A will be allowed to do a certain thing. User B will be allowed to do a certain thing, okay? User C cannot delete a certain thing, okay? So this authorization, so you authenticate user A, okay? User A will enter username and password and he'll say, all right, I'm user A. So he's given access to the system. Now, after getting the access, he cannot delete a particular record that's authorization okay so stopping him to delete a particular record is authorization okay so there are two aspects of security over here that you need to understand authentication 
Authentication is gaining access and it's proving who you are. Authorization is about what you are allowed to do after you're proven who you are. Okay, so in a sense, if, as a developer, you need to implement authentication in your application and you also need to control the authorization. Okay. So if you are implementing something, if you're building a simple application and if you don't need authorization, like everybody is allowed to access everything, that's absolutely fine. Authentication is what you need to deal with. But normally in every application that at least I have seen, authorization is really important. Okay, so there will be an admin. So if you're building an e-commerce store, there will be an admin, right? Who can create products, who can view orders, who can view customer's phone number. There will be a customer support executive who cannot view the revenue, who cannot like create a product, right? He can view the support tickets, right? So that's authorization, all right? So this is something that you need to understand. Now let's talk about some key security principles, okay? First principle is least privilege, okay? So users and processes should have the minimum level of access or permissions that you should assign to perform the necessary task. Okay. So whenever you are assigning something to anyone, make sure you give them the least level of privilege to complete the task. Okay. Secure by design. Now, what does this mean? So security consideration should be integrated into the design phase of software development rather than adding it as an off thought. Okay. So what happens is I'll tell you, normally we developers, we get requirements from someone in the company, like let's say a manager or a product owner, someone depending on how your hierarchy is designed okay security is not given a thought at that time okay so whatever requirements you're getting from the client or whoever okay he's going to give you all the functionality he wishes to have right people normally don't mention security as an aspect okay it has to be considered by default by you as a developer okay and you have to think of security into the design phase itself. So when you're designing your application, thinking about different components, you have to think of security. That's the best approach, okay? Normally what happens is developers build the system and then they implement the security and then they start thinking about security, okay? So this is not good, but it has to be secure by design, okay? Fail safe defaults. So systems should be designed with secure defaults, meaning they should operate securely out of the box without requiring additional configuration. Secure communication. So whatever communication you're doing, transmitting data over the network, it should be encrypted and you should prevent any interception over there, okay? And uh, it's essential that you protect all the secure information that you are transmitting. Input validation. So all the input data from the external APIs and everything should be validated to prevent any sort of attacks like SQL injection and so on, okay? This is also important. Auditing and logging. So you should have logging and auditing mechanisms to record the events related to security and all the actions that are being performed in your system. So normally what happens is there is a separate logging module that is built in if you, you see or you work in a production grade environment. So logging module, what logging module will do is who is doing what in the system that is being logged into a separate table, okay? So for example, if you're an admin and if you're creating a product, changing access roles, so all of that is being logged, okay? That this user at this time, he did these, these things. So that whenever there are any security incidents later on or any sort of breaches, so team can then investigate as to what happened and what led to this breach, okay? So this is one aspect. Regular updates and patch management, this is important. So you need to keep software dependencies, libraries, frameworks up to date with latest security patches and fixes. Because in the latest uh, updates, normally uh, the latest vulnerabilities or the new vulnerabilities have been fixed. So that is something that you need to keep in mind. All right. So this is about some of the key security principles that you should be aware of.